Right. It's going to be loud because I have to clap first. Good morning, everyone. So today in this video, we're going to be talking about the new price change AI Hunter, which is the first of the AI Hunter indicators. We're going to start off by just looking straight at the chart and how we're going to use it and also how I've been using it. And then from there, we're going to go into a small Q&A with Discord members where they can pick some questions that they might have. And from that, we can get some more concise answers and maybe fill the answers that you have having watched what I'm about to show you. So the first things first is jump over to the chart. Now on the chart, you can see that we've got two new indicators. We've got a uh, just a basic moving average. If I open the settings, you'll see that it is just a normal S SMA with smoothing five on a 20 length set to close. That's all. And I made the line thick and that was about it just because a thicker line is a little bit easier to be looking at. Then if we go to the next indicator on our chart, we can see that we've got uh, AI Hunter. I've turned off one plot. Other than that, it's pretty much all default settings, 80, 0 0.5, 100, 2, 10, and 2. We will go into a setting a little bit more in detail for when we cover another pair in a moment. First things first, how do we look with AI Hunter? Now, the first thing we should be realizing is that it gives us some white candles every so often. What we're foc our focus realistically is on these white candles. Now, it does technically show us on the chart on this little bar down here when those white candles are showing. It's simply done when it's below the purple line. Uh, you, under When the green is under the red line, sorry, not the purple line. The purple line is for something else. But that is when we're getting our candles. So these white candles, how do we use them? Well, the first things first, this indicator I've designed primarily for scalp traders and intraday traders. We can do some swing trading with it, and I will go into that more in detail near the end. But the first things first is we're going to want to look at the daily chart. Now, all we're looking for and all we're caring about is what side of the blue moving average we're on. So in this case, we can run through and go, ah, okay, so for Euro GBP, currently we're below it, so we're only looking for shorts. Or CHFJPY, we're above it, so we're only looking for buys. Oops, let's make that green. And you can very easily just go through and start color coding all your pairs as needed based off of your 20 moving average. We're not looking at candle color. We're not looking at anything else. You can see that this one we have just broken underneath. So on and so forth. We're just going to go through and be able to very, very quickly identify what we're looking for. From there, you're going to want to drop down to your signal entry. Now, there are a couple ways of approaching this. I am approaching it based off the one hour chart because I feel that's where I'm getting the most amount of pips per trade. We can also approach it from a five and 15 minute chart. For the five minute and lower, it's gonna adjust very slightly, but we'll start with the one hour. So now we've got our direction on the one hour on the daily, we can go and look for when we get entries on the one hour. Now you can see that this was a Friday, so it will be a little bit choppy but that's perfectly okay. We do expect some of that. Now, what we're looking for is, all we look for is when we are below, in this case, because we're only looking for shorts, we're looking for when we are below the 20 moving average and a white candle. When we've got both of those, all we have to look for are two things. We've just been given our entry, we enter at the candle close of that. So for instance, if I was to draw it on the chart, in this case, we'd enter here, but being the end of a Friday, I would not recommend that in the slightest. So uh, we would enter, normally we're going to be wanting sort of 15 pip stop loss there or thereabouts. Sometimes I do it to the line if it's a pair that's moving smoother. And also if it's got some good momentum behind it, I may even just do it to the edge of the candle. In this case, because it's Friday, there's no momentum or anything. So doing it to the edge of the candle is actually further than the line, but it's probably where you'd want to be. In, in an instance like, uh, I'm going to give an example that if this wasn't a white candle, it was this one instead, I would very, very happily just set my stop loss to the end of this candle plus a couple of pips for spread. And that would be as far as I would go. And then my stop loss, that's my stop loss. And then my take profit is going to be 10, 20 pips, somewhere in there, maybe one to one. Or what you can do, which is much, much more preferred, is set a trail stop. So you would end up 
either having one position which is your like 15 pips or so stop loss with the trail stop at the end or you can do it with two positions where you take your risk divide it by two and place two positions one which is just one to one and then another one which is designed for a longer time trail stop you can also use structure as your way of uh, finding your tape profit if we were going to use structure all we would have to do is determine where we think we're going on the daily or off the one hour in this case there's nothing really there um, but let's say for instance we took a trade our stop loss was I'm gonna say here what we could then consider is that well in this case one to one is off the bottom of that wick so we would end up needing to look further and probably we would catch our trade ideally on a breakthrough instead of at support you can use the idea of support and resistance if you wish, it's not required, um, but for some people they're going to find it's going to filter out a little bit of what they need that little bit easier. Other than that, this is definitely for short term trading, so we are again only looking for a couple of candles ideally. If price is pushing and pushing consistently we can go a little bit further, but it's not overly necessary. Be more than happy to take two or three candles of movement and run. Also, if we're going to be dropping down to the 15 minute, the rule would be exactly the same. So we would be looking for this candle. Well, because you're OGBP, we should only be looking at shorts. We shouldn't be taking this buy, uh, but I'm going to mark it up for reference. So we would want to take a buy, whatever stop loss you think is fine. I think in this case, I'd set it to the blue line. And then ideally just one to one, trail it out if you think it's gonna go for further due to structural requirements, but one to one should be more than fine, more if you can get it. Now, dropping down to the five minute, the other thing to consider is you're now looking at very, very small time frames. So what I would do is if I'm on the, looking for five minute trades, I'd be like, right, I'm also under on the one hour. So if my daily and my one hour have lined up for the direction, then I can look for my five minute trade because it's gonna enable me to take trades that are like this one here where we can just take a little bit and ride, or we'll get into something like this, where we can take a little bit and ride. We don't want to be getting into trades where it's like, ah, we're in a five minute and daily, but the one hour is trending upwards because the smaller time, although the one hour is a weaker time frame, it's still got enough movement available that it's gonna stop you out on the five minute. So ideally you want to do it when all three are lined up. Now we've kind of gone into that, we can look through a couple of other things. Normally when it comes to entries, when am I entering? The answer is any time during London session and New York session up till about, uh, for me it's about sort of 9 p.m. which would be, so five hours into New York, volume dies off, no point trading at the end of the day. Yeah, I just spat everywhere. If we're going into Asian session, then I would definitely be looking at trading off the higher, higher time frame. So look at your daily and your four hour charts. Maybe a best for the low time frame be looking at the two hour chart, but I definitely would not be scalping during Asian session. We just lack the volatility for what we need. So very much do sit on that higher end of the time frames. So NAS 100 can be a bit of an exception. NAS 100 often what I find is that in settings, I end up having to change this to 10. Uh, it just seems to be giving me better, better results, especially on some of these lower time frames like the three minute and the five minute and sometimes even the 15 minute. Other than that, I have tested this on Heiken Ashi candles. I've tested it on regular candles. I've tested it on Renko's. Renko's gave very strange results. Um, uh, let me just set up a Renko candle properly. So for NAS, I'm just going to set it to like a 10. It's probably enough. You can see that it kind of gives it at the end of trends more than anything else, uh, which makes it incredibly strange because it's behaving where it's showing you, ah, oh, this is the end of its run, not the beginning. Uh, I wouldn't use AI Hunter on Renko's. It just doesn't seem to work very well. Heiken Ashis are good. Heiken Ashis in instances like the conventional stock markets, so your Tesla and all of that, but I'll go to Tesla. So when you're trading something like a conventional stock, you'll see AI Hunter can do very, very well off of it. Uh, the reason being is that if I was to put normal candles on it, you're going to end up with gaps and, well, Tesla doesn't gap. 
But any time you see gaps, you will get inaccuracies. So every day, if if you're trading a stock which does gap regularly, so for instance like this, you'll find that after a gap, you'll get white candles. They are not necessary. Do ignore them and wait for a proper signal. So for instance, we would ignore all of these and wait until over here or here. You need them to turn off and then turn on again before you will get that proper signal. Uh, AI Hunter just does not like gaps. It does not understand them in the way that people do. So that is a general guide. Of don't use things that gap. If you are, use Heiken Ashes because it will remove the gap. So if I now go here, you'll see that you've removed the gap. In theory, you could take a trade from here and up. In practice, we know that because of Heiken Ashes, it's not displaying the correct price, but it is then doable. You can see that you can catch some nice little trends with Heiken Ashes. But yes, I have traded this setup on gold indices, mixed indices. So I've done German 40, US 30, NAS 100, Nifty 50, and JP225, I think was the other one I did. I have traded this with gold, with oil, crypto, Ethereum seems to perform slightly better with it than Bitcoin. Although, again, part of that is due to the gap nature. As soon as you jump to a one hour, it then consolidates too much to worry about. So that's why I'm trading more Ethereum than BTC. It just handles it a little bit smoother. When it comes to Forex pairs, you can see I've got a bunch of them here. These are most of the ones I've tested on. I have tested on some of the more major pairs as well, but those are primarily what I have been doing it on. Other than that, I will start going into some of our Q&A questions. So the first one I've got from uh, Pappy, and this is in my DMs directly, is, is this based on volume spikes? No. This indicator does not care in the slightest about the volume it's given. It's purely statistical. It's using some uh, machine learned concepts, which I've done outside of TradingView data-wise, to then join in with uh, some Bayesian probability to get a future determination of direction. So the reason that the candles are just white and not buy and sell signals is because it's detecting probability, it's not detecting a trend. The candle is painted during. So during candle formation, you may find it flickering on and off if it's right at the cusp of turning on. So you do have to wait for candle closure to get your confirmed signal. Uh, the candle is painted on close with the green line crossing the purple. It's actually the green line crossing the red line. Um, I get rid of that you'll see the red line is there it's just because I changed my setting so if I put this back you'll see that this changes and you'll see that every time it crosses the red line is when you get your signal like so uh, are there any other questions if anyone does have any questions do put them in the chat very quickly we'll I'll hold open live for another minute or two if you want access to this then you just need to jump to our store I'll let the link will be in the description down below or you can jump into our Discord and there will be someone that will be able to help you. There are affiliate codes floating around at the moment. They get you 10% off your first month. You just have to talk to an affiliate in our Discord and they'll be able to help you out. Discord.gg slash perfect entry. I'm going to assume that was the last question, so I'm going to move on. I will say thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.